Hi there! Thanks so much for joining me today as I paint these loose watercolor roses in a vase. Today I'll be using my size 6 and size 3 Intuition Round brushes by Artigria and also my 3 quarter inch flat brush also by Artigria. I'm using my 300 GSM watercolor paper by B Paper Company and Sonnet and Same Art watercolors. Let's get started! So the first thing I'm doing here is just laying in some water onto my paper, just using some clear water and outlining my vase, just the basic shape of it. I'm not really stressing about it. Um, I'm just laying in that water so that then I can go back in and drop some pigment into it. So I've outlined the vase and I'm just kind of filling the body of, of my painting outside of where I'm going to have the arrangement and the vase. Now I'm mixing a bit of my blue and I'm just taking that and outlining the vase shape into the water that I've already brushed in. And you can see I'm not too worried about getting it absolutely perfect. I don't really care about straight lines. I really want this to be very loose, almost abstract. I would say abstract if I if I thought I really did abstract very well, but I this is something I know about myself. I'm working hard at it, but it is a bit difficult for me. So I'm just blending to the outer edge of where I want my painting, but I'm leaving a bit of a border around the painting itself. And then I'm just going in around where I want my florals to be. So um, I'm adding some more water out here. Now I brushed in some water earlier, but that's gotten a bit dry. This B paper is not 100% cotton wonderful. It's, it's a pulp, I'm pretty sure. And so because of that, it doesn't stay just super wet. And, uh, but this works really well, just going in and dotting in some more of this water really loosely. And then I'm taking some more pigment and I'm just dotting that in here very, very abstract, very randomly. I'm not really paying attention to any kind of shape. I just want it on the outer part of where my florals will be. Now I will overlap some of the florals over the background. But the bulk of it, the very center of those florals, I want to keep that kind of clear of pigment. I'm just smoothing out the edges here for anything, kind of making it consistent, but again, not perfect. I don't mind the texture. Um, various places having a little more pigment. I don't mind that at all. And so here I'm brushing in a bit more water just to define the top of my vase and then kind of make a distinction between the vase and my and my florals. And then I just dabbed in very lightly some more pigment into where I'm going to have my florals. I just kind of second guessed that and thought, you know, I'd rather have more of that than not and have it all kind of be consistent. Now, because my florals are going to have some shadow in there, I decided to dot even a bit more pigment there. This is going to be my shadow kind of um, foundation for my florals. Sometimes I leave the floral area kind of um, empty or void of pigment as far as the background color, but I do find that it's fun to play with it and sometimes adding it there gives a really nice um, depth to that bouquet or arrangement. Just a little more at the top of that vase and dotting in into this very wet area, a little more pigment for some shadows. It really does add a nice amount of depth, so I recommend playing with it. Now a bit of shadow at the bottom of my vase, and I'm just taking the pigment there and then brushing it downward in these strokes, kind of, kind of harsh, but then I'll go in and soften that a little with some water. And see, just taking a bit of water and touching that, not entirely trying to obliterate it, just softening it some. Now here I have put some pigment into this water and I may end up with some of that blooming, the, the effect that happens when there's water introduced into the pigment and it pushes that pigment. But I don't mind that and especially in a shadow I feel like it can just add a really interesting look so I don't mind it at all. Now I want to go and add a little more definition. At the bottom of this base, I just want to kind of 
clean up and define the shadow just a bit because I want a good strong shadow at the the entire bottom of the vase and you'll notice I went up just a tiny bit on the right so that my vase kind of has the appearance of dimension curvature now I'm going in and giving another little inner outline for the bottom of this vase that kind of separation to me kind of speaks of the the bottom of the glass being a little thicker and so that's kind of my idea here just kind of soften that that bottom edge there and a little more pigment just dropped right into that so now I want to loosen this pigment at the bottom of the vase and to do that I've just wet my brush and I'm just brushing the pigment upward and as I do that I'm going ahead up the side of the vase and below the very edge of the top and inside the very edges on both the left and right side with this damp brush and and because I've put water in here in the bottom and I've just re-wet my brush I'm able to have this really loose wet look here and and that's my goal I really want this vase to be filled with just this loose watery um, watercolor so I want to keep the shadow over here at the left predominantly although I I like some at the bottom too but I do not want to overly blend this pigment I I have left a bit of loose water inside there even to the point where there's a bit of an area on the right side that I did not brush with water and that is going to make just really such a nice strong highlight um, it will look like a reflective portion of the class but I just want to keep this really loose and so now I've gotten my red pigment on here and I am just making some alternating crescents for my roses and I do that with some thin and thick strokes. I always start with really thin strokes in the center. And, um, and just, you know, based on where, which direction my, my flowers are angled and leaning, that is really what determines where I place my thicker strokes. But, but I usually try to place those in a way that indicates that's the portion of the flower that's closer to the viewer. So um, I also like to brush in some light, loose petal shapes. As I'm working these, I don't want to work too many at a time because while the pigment's wet, I've gone in and wet my brush and dragged off a good bit of the water on the side of my jar because I don't want to flood these, but I'm just touching this pigment with the wet brush so that where I brush the water, that pigment will just flow into those so I can brush petal type shapes and just kind of continue some of those crescents you know I'm not I don't touch every place where I've put the pigment um, I just like to just play with this and lightly touch I don't want to overdo it because I want some places that really bleed and lend to that loose atmospheric type look but then I also want to retain some of the shadows and some of the structure of the flower. And that's what those dark bits do. So, and you can tell I'm not focusing heavily on making things very botanically accurate. I just want something that evokes the idea of a rose. And, you know, I'm happy enough if it's just a flower, but if it looks like a rose, I'm really tickled with that. <laughs> So I'm just going in sometimes with a little more pigment and right here I find I just really need to sit back and breathe and kind of really kind of examine where I want to place my next flowers and how I want them angled and and the size that I want them. I want these to be probably little buds and so many times I find that I don't take the time to really think about how I want to compose my painting and honestly I think that's one of the big things that makes me unhappy at the end of a painting is because I didn't take that time and um, I guess I'm just finally realizing or maybe giving myself permission to take my time to not feel some imperative to 
to work really fast and intuitively. The, the thing is, you know, we, we create kind of this mystical idea of, of artists having almost a muscle memory, you know, that the gift just flows, that a painting just flows out and, and you're not really an artist if that's not the case. And I just don't think that's true. I think it's absolutely fine to, to sit and ponder, what should my next stroke be? What should my next series be? Um, I'm giving myself permission to do that. And I feel many times I have rushed through a painting, even practice. And especially with recording, I feel like I will will short change myself because I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to get it finished and I don't want to belabor um, what I'm doing. And, and the truth is, sometimes it takes a little longer to plan out what the next strokes are going to be. And that is okay. I just want to give you permission to take your time to think about it if you need to or want to, because you can, you absolutely can. And you will, you'll probably even enjoy the painting process more. So that was extra. That was bonus today. <laughs> I'm preparing some of my green because I want to get some of these leaves in here. And a lot of times I will start with leaves in my paintings of flowers, or I'll, I'll get kind of a, you know, a foundation of where I want some of the leaves. But today I want to start with the stems and I just want to get these stems in there. I want everything to have its, just the, the right orientation so that then I can build my leaves from there. And I don't always do it that way. And I think, you know, either way is fine, but this is what I'm doing today. And so I'm just getting these stems in here. And, you know, one of my biggest challenges is not crossing my stems in the very center of the vase. And I've done that so many times. And sometimes it's just one of those things where I let autopilot take over. And uh, y'all, my autopilot is not properly calibrated. So, you know, sometimes it, it just does goofy, goofy things. So when I talk about that muscle memory, I, you know, I don't always have it. I most of the time don't have it. And um, so I, I'm just glad I'm giving myself the, the freedom to, to assess things as I go and, you know, to take the time to, to put things where, where I really want them rather than afterward going, Oh, why did I put that leaf there? I could have put it, <laughs> I should have put it over here or, you know, just, all of those silly second guessing things that we do as artists. But now you'll see as I'm brushing these leaves, the larger leaves that I'm brushing, I kind of turn my brush and I drag at the, at the top of the leaf at the widest part, I kind of drag that with the side of the brush. And then as I'm dragging along to the tip of the leaf, I will kind of come up to the tip of my brush there. And then I just kind of make some easy, simple strokes for some of the smaller background leaves that are just kind of coming out from the background from behind some of the flowers very simple not overthinking them these are for me these are not um you know a big they're they're not a big thing i don't want to stress over them so i'm just looking around to see where else i should place them leaf placement is so challenging to me and I know that often I will, I will make my leaves a little too symmetric or mirror, you know, one side will mirror the other. And so I really try to avoid that because I, I don't want that look in my paintings, but it can be challenging. So if that's your challenge too, then, you know, I'm probably in good company. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure I want to blend some of my green with some brown and make some multi-leaf stems in here as well. Just a few sets of those and um, I just think those are so fun. They're really, they're interesting I think to add to a painting. They're super simple. It's a stem and I often will do these two, you know, two stems together but it's a stem and then you just touch in these leaves could not be simpler. Just touch, touch to the stem. I like when some of them overlap a little, and um, I think that is a really easy, um, nice way to add depth in a painting. Some of the leaves can overlap. They can, they can overlap each other. And here I'm so glad that I have thought to 
at the stem for these leaves because every once in a while I notice I'll add some some variety, some different kind of leaf into my painting and I'll forget to put the stem in there because I've already done stems for my flowers and um, so, you know, <laughs> we all have our cross to bear, don't we? But yeah, it can be, that can definitely be a challenge. So, and, and I like to say, and I like to remind myself and others that you don't have to have a stem for everything. Every flower doesn't have to be connected to a stem. You don't have to see every one of those. It really is. It's okay not to do that. If it makes sense to you, then that's fine. So I'll probably add one more of these little multi-leaf things over here. Just a little leaf sticking out, I think. Yeah, that's perfect. And then I want to connect this to my, to my main stem in here. These I'm just going to have one stem and they can all be kind of branching off of that. I want to add a little bit of greenery inside my arrangement here. Just, you know, have some uh, have some leaves and bits of bits of things in the background and and in between the flowers and they don't have to be full details, just little hints of color, but just to kind of flesh that out. Some of the stems, if they're a little, um, if they're just a little harsh, they can be softened with a little, just a touch of water. Kind of loosen those up. I am so happy with this. This is probably one of my most favorite rose paintings that I've done. I'm just really happy with the, the way the lighting looks. You know, it looks a a bit backlit with uh, with a shadow coming forward. Very fun. And I'm just taking some of this pigment, the same pigment I used for these leaves, and dragging all the way down the stem and then each of the leaves with just a little vein, one little simple vein, but just for a little more detail, a tiny bit. It's almost effortless, but it's it's such a tiny thing, but it really adds a nice touch to these. Gosh, I love that. Super cute. This would make such a great card. This might even make a nice print. <laughs> so cute. So now I now want to add a bit more water. I want to soften up those stems inside there. So I want to just prep some of my paint. So now I'd like to add a bit more shadow and maybe a little more looseness in this water here. So I'm adding a little more of the pigment at the bottom of the vase and then below the vase where my shadow starts. And then I want to take some water and just kind of loosen that up by, by softening it with some water. And then I want to take this water on up and just, you know, gently, delicately here and there touch around my stems. I really like it when the stems kind of interact with that water and, and kind of bleed into it. I think it gives that a little more depth inside the vase. And I'm just brushing up around my water line. And oops, just got a little too much there and kind of want to... Um, to dab some of that pigment away. I'm kind of directing the pigment up into the water that I brushed there. And that was a lot of pigment, but that's okay. Concentrating a little more on the left and then at the bottom, even a little bit at the bottom right. And then I'm going in with a little more water and just softening all of that. And of course, because I still have some of that blue pigment on my brush, Touching it around where I have water inside the vase is taking some of it kind of, you know, all around, but just keeping it very loose. I don't want everything touched with water. I don't want pigment everywhere and certainly not the same level, the same value of pigment. I'm really trying to, I'm really trying for something that's just loose and, 
and looks like it has shadow and highlight. So my shadow is on the left, but that's because the light is coming from the back in this painting. So I have a little bit of shadow on the left and then being cast to the front right. And then just softening that because I added a little more pigment there. Just want to soften that and then kind of blend it out a little. Just a little more effort than I generally make on a shadow, but I felt it needed it. I just love how this water looks. I'm so happy with this. Oh my gosh. It's one of my favorites. It's just so simple. You know, you could do this for a card. I think this would make a lovely painting that could even go on someone's wall. You know, you could frame it. That the background really gives it some more character and texture. So I had so much fun painting this today, and I hope you did too. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope you'll paint it if you didn't. And uh, as always, happy painting.